Welcome to the Humble Hoof Podcast. My name is Alicia Harlov. This is a podcast for both horse owners and hoof care professionals, offering discussions into various philosophies on the health of the hoof and soundness of your horse. Please check us out on Facebook or at thehumblehoof.com. I always knew Sarah Hunt as a PHCP member and hoof boot wizard. Not only is she a busy hoof care provider in San Diego, California, but her business, Spectrum Equine, helps owners find the perfect hoof boot solution for their situation. Because of this, I asked her if I could pick her brain for the podcast about booting choices and things to consider when looking for a hoof boot for your horse. And side note, if you're looking for more information on riding boots or therapy boots, look up Sarah's webinar with Wendy Murdoch on YouTube and keep an eye out for a second Humble Hoof episode on tips and tricks for booting your horse. So why don't you start and actually tell us how you got into hoof care to begin with. So in 2006 or so, my first horse was 18 and uh, that was really feeling that she was time to be retired uh, to just flat trail rides, you know, and I felt that, you know, I needed to find something new for her because what we were doing wasn't working. And so I had been interested sort of in this barefoot thing that was kind of getting popular, but, you know, I had horses in training and I did trail rides on rocks and I, you know, all of those traditional arguments for why you should have your horse in full shoes. And, you know, well, all of a sudden my horse wasn't in training or going on trail rides. So I went ahead and I pulled her shoes and I rehabbed her and she's been doing really well ever since. She's now 33 and still sound. So once I saw that it really does work, then I started transitioning my other horses and they all got sounder and sounder. And so I was doing more and more with them and I needed hoof protection and I wasn't willing to put shoes back on them. And so I started obviously getting boots for them. And, you know, at the time we didn't have as many cool options as we do now. The glove had just come out. I had, you know, some epics around for spare tire sort of situations. Um, we were using Cavallos as well. And then, you know, we kind of went from there. You know, every horse needs a different boot because they have a different foot. And as I gained experience with the different boots on my own horses, I started to help my friends. And eventually this all spiraled. And in uh, 2018, I opened my business and I was focusing primarily on booting with some trimming. Now I'm doing actually primarily trimming with quite a bit of booting as well. Yeah. And so, you know, you mentioned this a little bit in what you were just talking about, but why might an owner want to put boots on their horses in the first place? So there are multiple reasons why hoof protection is a really great thing. Obviously, if you are going on terrain that your horse does not live on, then you can't really expect your horse to also then go work on it if they don't live on it every day. If you have a horse who is rehabbing from a variety of problems, you know, whether it's something chronic like long-term laminitis or navicular or thin soles, or even just something as, hey, you know, they blew an abscess or you're coming off of a really wet winter when they lost a lot of that thick callus that they build up. And so you need something to help protect them. Or as is the case down here in Southern California, you know, most of the time the horses are in small corrals, 24, 24, or small dry lots. And which is just the case when it comes with whole horse keeping on small acreage or at boarding barns. And we go trail riding and the trails here are, I mean, it's packed DG, it's rock, it's, it's basically concrete, functionally, in many, many places. So the horses need protection. And a lot of folks decide to, well, that's why you have to put shoes on. But a lot of us feel that your traditional metal shoe with perimeter rim fit and all of that have a lot of downsides. And we see it in the horses. and. So therefore, boots really can be such an optimal situation. You can have your horse barefoot, and then for the day or two a week that you trail ride, you can put your boots on. If you do a lot of trail riding, if you get a really good fit with a performance boot, it really doesn't take more than an extra two or three minutes when you're getting your horse ready. And a well-functioning boot that fits well should not influence your horse at all. You shouldn't have any issues with rubs. You shouldn't be losing them. They shouldn't be turning. You shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. And as I've had the experience of working on a bunch of different horses, I've been able to get really pretty good at figuring out what types of boots are good for you with your riding style and what your needs are and what types of boots will fit your horse's foot shape and potential concerns. Yeah, that's awesome. And actually, your your explanation there prompted another question. So 
how do we know? I, I mean, obviously not everybody has a, a boot fitter in their area. So how do we know if we're trying boots on our horses, if they fit well, are there, are there things we can look for without a visual? I know that's harder. Yeah. Um, so visuals obviously make this easier, but if you have a hoof, which is very akin to the natural hoof and has the you know optical kind of trim that we look for that these boots are designed for a good short toe a low heel not not, not too low of a heel but a, a lower heel it's a nice shape it's not too contracted it's fairly round then the performance type boots you shouldn't have too much of an issue and by performance type boots you know i'm talking about scoot boots easy boot gloves renegades exploras um, and we can go into kind of more of a listing on each different type here in, in a minute. If you have a hoof with some issues where those performance type boots, which are very slim fitting, have gaps or aren't the right measurements or the wrong shape or they're too wide um, or they're too narrow, actually, sometimes, you know, if you've got a lot of flaring going on, then we start looking at a boot that doesn't fit so snugly in order to accommodate for fitting issues because it since they don't fit so tightly, they are bulkier, and so they wrap around the entire foot and go above the hairline. And so that helps hold them on when you've got a foot that's not optimally shaped for a more performance-type boot. And have you come across a foot that just won't fit into any type of boot? Every so often, I will come across a foot that is so pathological that it's just... We can try getting them into a boot, and every so often I'll be surprised and we'll be successful, but the amount of modifications we'll have to make or precautions we'll have to take in terms of protecting the hairline and protecting from rubs and all of these things. Usually what in that case is a better option is to do a couple of rounds of glue ones and really rehab that foot into a healthier space and then try again with boots. And obviously that's not necessarily a situation everybody's able to do given the uh, accessibility to various health care providers in your area who have experience with this sort of thing. But for the most part, I have been able to get a good boot fit on just about every client that I've come across. Yeah, that's awesome. And I actually like, I, I use riding boots myself, but I have less experience with fitting all the different brands of boots. Um, obviously a lot less than you have. Um, and I would say that, you know, we were just talking about horses that need rehab. And I would say that I have more experience with fitting, you know, the rehab therapy type boots. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the difference between a riding boot and, you know, how we need such that tight fit for it to stay on and then maybe mm -hmm. a rehab therapy boot. Yeah. So, and there is some blurring of the lines in there when we have horses who are kind of in like that light rehab phase where they're not like needing a completely dedicated therapy boot, but they do need like 24 seven or 22 hours a day or whatever protection with thick pads and that kind of thing in turnout. But speaking specifically to an exclusively therapy boot, Basically, we're looking at Easy Boot Cloud, Soft Ride, and the Equine Fusion Recovery. And there are a couple of others. Obviously, whenever I'm talking about boot types, there are going to be others than the ones I'm mentioning. I'm going to be talking about the ones that I'm familiar with. Um, and also, there's no way that I can list every single boot available in every category because there are like, dozens on the market. Um, so I'm going to speak to the ones that I have experience with. Um, and then a few others that are common. So the cloud soft ride and recovery, those are going to be your primary therapy boots. I like the recovery personally. I find that uh, it's just a really nice boot. I really love the equine fusion soles on their boots and they have the same uh, sole material on all of their, their models. And, um, the one trick with the recovery is that it only comes in the standard sizes. It doesn't come in slims. So if you have a particularly narrow foot, they, they can twist. But I really like them. I put Easy Boot Cloud pads in them. So that's my preference. It's either going to be the Easy Boot Cloud with cloud pads or any fine fusion with the cloud pads in them, generally speaking. And so for therapy boots, those are going to be horses who really, you know, they're just lame. They're not rideable. There may be light turnout, light hand walking, but they're horses who are in active rehab from some sort of situation. And those boots are not meant to fit super snugly. You know, because they're usually fitting a, a hoof that has distortions 
you know, you might have a, a foundered horse with a really long toe or really long heel. You might have an avicular horse who's you know, got a really upright foot, something like that, where your main focus with the therapy of the boot is protecting the foot with a really thick pad. So that's going to be your focus with a therapy boot is, okay, first up, get something on this horse so the horse can walk around. Second up, make sure that you can put a big old thick pad in there. So sometimes when we have fairly normal feet that, you know, for whatever reason have, you know, say you have a horse with a super thin sole. Okay, they need a therapy type boot, but hey, you know, the foot's actually fairly normal in terms of measurements. Okay, so maybe you can do a Cavallo or an equine fusion active. Or actually, the Equine Fusion Ultra and Ultra is great for a turnout with a thick pad in there with a more normal shaped foot. Uh, I really do like it for that purpose. Or you can do a Cavallo or maybe Easy Boot Trail. Those bulkier boots where they don't rely on a snug fit. So you can put a big thick pad in there. But the foot does need to be a fairly normal measurement in order to fit in a boot like that. Because they are structured enough that they stay put for riding work in theory. And so if you have a super distorted foot that's going to put a lot of pressure in those structured areas, then you're going to get rubs. So obviously that's not going to work for a, a real distorted foot, which, whereas these therapy boots tend to be very flexible, very soft, um, very forgiving to weirdly shaped feet and hoof capsules. And when it comes to therapy boots, do you have a guideline for how long the horse is in them or when they take breaks out of them? So I like to them to be, at least in a perfect world, a couple hours a day for a horse who's really needing them constantly, you know, so if you can take them out of there for a couple hours a day, put them in some nice soft sand or a nice deep shavings bed, depending on the situation, you know, here in San Diego, we don't have a huge wetness issue. So, and very often folks have sand in a round pen or whatever. So I'll suggest, Hey, you know, throw them in the round pen for even half an hour. Um, if they're comfortable enough, some of them are just not even comfortable enough for that. And that's when we're in a situation where we're like, maybe we should put you in glue arms instead. So, you know, something like, you know, nice warm sand, it'll help kind of exfoliate some of that fleshy goo out of there that tends to, to come out and, tends to, and, and it'll do a nice job of drying the foot out. Uh, shavings will dry the foot, which is not nicely as well. Uh, feet do sweat inside these boots when they're in there for 22, 23, 24 hours a day. So that gives you time to clean the foot clean the boots, use some spray in there to help with any fungal growth, and then you can powder everything up with gold bond and put the boot back on after a little while. What's a really, really optimal situation I find for horses who are partially through their rehab, it's like 12 hours a day on and off. So as long as they have access to someplace soft to hang out when they're barefoot. Uh, if, you, if they don't have access to someplace soft to hang out, then Obviously, you can't pressure your horse into taking weight on feet that just aren't ready for it yet on hard ground. But if you've got, you know, a nice little turnout, you can put a little sandy corner in there or a shavings corner. And, you know, you put boots on in the morning, take them off at night. Horse can spend half the time cruising around really well in the boots and spend half the time getting some of that stimulation that they need barefoot as well, as long as they're comfortable enough to do that. Um, the, the horses... Comfort is your parameter for how much time to spend in and out of boots and how long they should be in therapy boots in the first place. And, and obviously there are horses that are perfectly fine barefoot in their turnout that aren't, you know, needing their feet fully rehabbed. They have pretty comfortable feet, but they need some protection for trails, like you mentioned, or riding mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I, I obviously don't fit as many riding boots. I do usually take measurements for owners and then give them some names of brands that I like so they can kind of explore on their own. And I'm always happy to troubleshoot once the boots come in. Um, but something I've come across or had difficulty with is really upright clubby feet and finding a boot <laughs> that actually stays on. And the horse might actually be pretty like, you know, comfortable, like they're happy, but they just want a little added protection when they're ridden. And I didn't know if you had any tips for, for horses with more upright feet. Yeah, and this is really the tricky one because no manufacturer wants to claim that their boot works for X, Y, or Z. Because the thing is, is that no one boot works for X, Y, or Z. Every horse is different. And even if you get a good fit, sometimes you'll get a really good fit. You'll be feeling, oh, yeah, this is a nice fit. It's exactly how it should be. And you go out and you're like, 
I, you know, I've had, I've had this happen. I, I leave and the, and the owner turns the horse out and I get a phone call an hour later. Both boots came off. I'm like, what? That was perfect. How? So sometimes it's even just a matter of how the horse moves. If they've got a lot of twists in their boot, but some of these gated horses are a nightmare. <laughs> so as far as upright feet go, um, there are some new boots on the market. I have not used them extensively, which have adjustments in through the heel to give some height options. And that would be the Easy Boot Fury models. The Explorer has some of this tweakiness available to it. I've only just started playing with those, but I really do like them in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how those function. And honestly, my usual go-to to this situation, and I have a horse who did front half mile endurance rides and a lot of conditioning in these boots. And he's is kind of an upright guy. He's not full out club, but he's a pretty upright guy. That would be Renegades. And Renegades, because the Captivator is completely separate from the base of the boot, you can get the Captivator on at a totally different angle. And that's usually what these horses need, is you need a Captivator or your Gator. Whatever on the model you're looking at goes around the heels. It has to be at a different angle than the rest of the boot. And that's why we get rub problems. And with the Renegade, because the system is held together with a cable, so it's totally flexible, the Renegades often do work fairly well for these horses. Now, there are some downsides to Renegades themselves, the maintenance on them and the cables and whatnot, but in this case, I think they really do shine for uh, dealing with these slightly tweaky feet. The Easy Boot Glove 50 uh, is a new one. I believe it's only available at Riding Warehouse right now. They are offering a adjustable heel height. I have not played with those yet. I'm looking forward to when I have a, a horse who's a candidate. But those might be another cool option for the more upright-footed horse. Yeah, I actually got the the um, Glove 50 as like a trial. And I, well, granted, my pony isn't super upright. But um, I was I thought they were really cool. I was really happy with them. They stayed on really well. Yeah, I mean, the, the glove itself is a great boot that's super, super adaptable. And sometimes we can get the glove working for an upright-footed horse, depending on the angles of the foot. True club feet are tough. And gloves can be sometimes adapted if it's a true club, so you have that really steep toe wall. But if the heel can be managed and it's not a super tall heel, it's just a really steep foot, then sometimes we can get a glove to work with heat fitting. So we can get that steep toe wall fit in with heat fitting and usually a power strap. And then as long as the heel is not so high that the gator doesn't work properly, then I've, I've had some success with that. But very often with these upright footed horses, I do end up going to renegades. Yeah. And then on the other side of things, there are some horses that we see that have kind of a chronically low heel and they might not Mm -hmm. even be all that uncomfortable, but their heel just isn't what we want it to be. Do you still have fit issues with horses with low feet? Yes, absolutely. Most, again, most of these boots are designed to fit the optimal type of barefoot hoof that we see with, you know, and, and most of that mindset is based on the wild horse model. So you think of a low heel, it's not too low, but it's not high, but you're, so your bulbs are off the ground. And what tends to happen with these really low heeled horses, separate from underrun heels, because underrun heels are not low heels, they are crushed heels that are actually long, but low heeled horses, and you'll see these, you know, those frogs are smashed against the ground. You've got a real big flat spot from just wear. Um, and oftentimes those bulbs are actually down on the ground itself. Those can be tricky to fit because what actually can be the issue is not so much the bulbs get rubbed, but the pastern does. So for example, scoot boots are not great for this situation because what tends to happen is the top of the bulge straps rubs rub the pastern because they stick up too high. So gloves can work for this situation sometimes. Um, you usually have to heat fit uh, because very often the toe angle is too far back. And so the wall of the glove kind of gaps away from the front of the, of the foot. 
And so we'll size down, heat fit out the toe, and then get a good fit there. Um, again, I am looking forward to seeing if the adjustability options with the Explora Magic will offer some possibility here um, because you can adjust how the, the, the heel strap is in terms of angle, um, which might be a really cool uh, option for these horses. Um, something else you can do is you can go to the farrier supply and get like a one degree wedge pad and that will kind of just, or even just a regular flat pad. And that will kind of lift the foot up in the boot enough to provide a little bit of relief from where the gator or the heel area of the boot hits the horse. So that's really the issue is just where are the possible rub points on this particular horse's anatomy with this particular boot? Is it something that we can influence? Is it something that we can change with heat fitting or with a different gator or, you know, a little pad in there or something? Or is it just not going to work? Yeah. And I think we could do a whole separate episode just on like tips and tricks for how to stop. Oh, absolutely. And, and what to do for, <laughs> so, um, so we actually, you know, might plan for that for another conversation. But, you know, in terms of just the basics of booting, uh, in my area, obviously, I don't know that you see this as much, but we can be riding on a trail and come across like, you know, hard ground and then mud and then rivers. And then, you know, we can go through every kind of terrain. Um, and I always set out on a trail thinking like, oh, my goodness, I hope these boots stay on the whole ride. And I don't know if you think of any kinds of boots that you worry about in certain terrain or ones that you go to if you know that there's going to be mud or something that might uh, put extra strain on that boot on the foot? Well, let me first speak to my particular booting philosophy, which is start with a performance boot. You're going to have, if you can get a really good fit with a performance boot, you're going to have the fewest problems because we don't have the boot coming up above the hairline where mud or debris can come in and build up inside the boot and rub. You don't have uh, so much bulk where the horse is going to you know, tr trip over them or have interference problems. You don't have the weight. You're not going to influence the gates as much. Basically, by going with a performance hoof boot, you are going to have the most options in terms of use. A performance boot is great for a one-hour trail ride. It's great for a six-hour trail ride. It's great for if you're going in a parade or something and you're going to be riding on asphalt, you don't want to slip. It's, there's, there's nothing that a performance boot can't do besides thick pads, which is a therapy thing. So that's a different situation altogether. So I always start with a performance boot. My experience has shown me that the most flexible of the performance boots, and when I talk about a performance boot, I'm meaning Easy Boot Glove, Epic, or Fury, uh, a Scoot Boot, the Renegade, an Evo, a Flex, an Explorer Magic. Things that are minimalist and fit really close to the hoof wall. Very often I start with Scoot Boots because they're really user-friendly. There's not a lot to maintain. They fit a lot of feet. They are not required to stay on a really tight uh, trimming schedule. They can accommodate some quarter flare, which is... Uh, one of the things that really sets them apart from a lot of other boots. They drain really well. You know, there's, the design is just, it works for a huge number of horses. And so when we come to mud, as you say, or crazy terrain where you're scrambling or things that are really going to put a lot of torque and twist on a boot, um, or a metal shoe for that matter. I mean, that's not, you know, say that uh, this is all boot exclusive problems. The scoot boot mud strap is a really, really great little accessory. It's a little bit fiddly. It adds an extra 30 seconds or a minute per boot to get it all put on there. And yes, fine. But when you've got a well-fitted scoot with a good mud strap, like those suckers don't come off. <laughs> they just don't. Like you'd have to do something where it's like, okay, anything is going to come off in that situation. And I've still seen, you know, I mean, I've had to do a, a, a up a scoot as a, an emergency kind of situation where it's like, okay, this boot is too big. So I'm going to put, you know, some extra straps on and I'm going to do a mud strap and I'm going to put an extra gator in here. I'm going to just take up space and lock it down with a mud strap. And I mean, it shifts a little bit cause it's size too big, but it got us back, you know, to, uh, back to camp. So 
the scoop boot mud strap is a super awesome accessory that I definitely recommend folks have if you do any kind of riding where you're going to really be stressing your boot. And that doesn't mean mud. That means, you know, scrambles up crazy rock. That means, you know, some nastier terrain, street, uh, creek crossings where you don't know you could step in a big mud hole, you know. So that's a really good option. Renegades do also tend to stay put really, really well once you get everything dialed in. So you do need an adjustment period with Renegades as you learn how to use them, you learn how to adjust them, you learn how they need to fit your horse's foot. But once you get everything dialed in really good there, then they tend to be fairly bulletproof as long as you maintain your cables and your straps really well. Obviously, if you break a cable, then that's not going to stay on. <laughs> the Explora, again, I'm really excited about getting to know these boots better. I'm really looking forward to the function and seeing how they work on my own horse. The glove is one of those boots where it either works flawlessly or it's going to drive you crazy, um, which is really too bad because frankly, in my opinion, it's probably one of the best boots on the market in terms of function. But if it doesn't fit your horse's foot really, 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 really well, then you're going to have some issues with it. I'm kind of trying to touch on all, all of the major performance boots since a lot of folks use these. And there are some new ones on the market, again, like I said. Um, and of course, listening to this in the future down the line when more boots come on the market, I, I always can't speak to those. Every boot has pros and cons, and a lot of those are directly influenced by the foot they're on. And so that's why this booting thing can be such a nightmare until you figure it out. And then it's wonderful because you have boots that are just like, awesome and you never have to worry about them and you get really good at putting them on and you get really good at maintaining them and, and then you've got awesome function from your boots awesome function from your horse and you can do whatever you want you've got a great boot so all of those reasons are why i like to start with the performance boots because once you get them dialed in they're pretty bulletproof yeah and i think one of the main morals is you know, if one boot didn't work for your horse, it doesn't mean that there isn't another one that will be great. Absolutely. I have fit some really screwed up feet in heat fit gloves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, really, really screwed up feet in heat fit gloves. And, you know, sometimes it's as simple as, well, a glove shell fits this foot really well but the foot is a little wonky or the horse twists in how they move or, you know, the horse is pigeon toed or toes out and it just isn't working. So let's go to a easy boot back country, which is a glove shell with a bigger upper on it. I've got several clients who we've done that with. They also often work really well for like mule feet, you know, which are kind of longer and narrower and they've got kind of differently shaped heel bulbs. But fitting for donkeys and mules is a whole different situation. So if you have feet that won't fit in your performance boot category, then we start going to the pleasure riding category is how I kind of term it. So for folks who ride lightly, you know, you ride on Sundays or, you know, your horse is fine in the arena and fine in the turnout, but you just need a little extra coverage for your ride and you walk and you trot some and maybe you'll canter down the trail a little, but you're not doing something super serious. I mean, this is honestly the majority of riders. And we have a couple of boots, which are sort of, they walk the line between the pleasure riding and the performance boot. They do come up around the hairline. They fasten around the entire foot, which is something that I categorize as a pleasure riding boot. But the design really lends itself to a lot more activity than some of these other pleasure riding boots do. So those would be the Easy Boot Backcountry and the Equine Fusion Active. I have fit some of these horses who are more active and do a lot more with their boots, but have funky feet or knee pads or any number of things. And therefore, okay, we're going to lean towards a more all-encompassing around the foot fit and so we go with a pleasure riding boot and we go with an active or a backcountry and those are really super boots for those occasions but otherwise when i'm talking a pleasure riding boot i'm talking cavallos easy boot trails um, and cavallos it's any model but elb the simple the sport trek the old mac the new mac you know again like i said there are so many boots on the market that there's just no way for me to mention all of them in one thing 
all of these boots, they come up around the hairline, they fasten, they, a lot of them have, a, you know, two big Velcro flaps and then a little Velcro strap or a little buckle of some variety. And because they come up above the hairline, they have the potential to rub around the hairline, to rub at the pastern, to rub at the heel bulbs. And the more work you do in them, the more potential for rubbing you have. So if you're really doing a lot of riding, I really encourage you to start with a performance type boot. Try and get your fitting done there. And if you really can't do it, then look at these pleasure riding models. But, you know, if you're just someone who does mostly arena work and you like to try ride on Sundays, then a pleasure riding boot is probably a great option for you. You know, they're easy to take on and off. They're easy to manage. You know, I have a lot of clients who are older and you know, they've got like arthritis in their hands or something like that. And they need a really easy boot. Sometimes, you know, a Cavallo, that's just easy. It's nice. So all of these are good options for that. And they are good quality boots. You know, I don't have a best boot or worst boot or anything like that. People ask me, oh, what's the best boot? I'm like, the one that fits your horse and suits your needs. And they're like, that's helpful. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I really can't answer your question more specifically than that without knowing a whole bunch more information. And I'm always happy to help people. Um, you know, I it's tricky to fit boots with measurements, especially at a distance, because that's one 2D plane of a very 3D and flexing object that has a lot of external forces applied to it. So measuring just the sole of the foot and sending pictures and then deciding from there that doesn't really work. But if, you know, you can work with somebody who at least has some experience and can say, oh yeah, well, I would suggest boot A, B, or C for you based on what you've told me, you know, then you can say, okay, I really like boot B. So I'm going to go find a really experienced remote fitter for boot B um, and work with that person you know, that might be the best way to go is to kind of take it in two steps from there. Um, not just say, oh, look, it popped up on Facebook again. This must mean that I should look at this booth that's advertised. No, that just means that they have enough money to spend on really good advertising algorithms. Um, <laughs> just because it was chosen by Horse Journal as boot of the year or whatever does not mean really anything. Um, aside from maybe it's a quality made product, but there are lots of really good quality products on the market just has to be the right one for you and your horse yeah so you know i get a lot of questions of you know x y or z my horse gets rubbed or my horse interferes they've got a big stride or my horse you know gets foot sore or hey i ride through a lot of sand or hey i ride in a lot of mud or hey i go and ride at the mountains or all of these situations the thing is is that i like i like i said i dial it down to start with a performance type boot Unless your horse needs pads, and particularly pads over a quarter of an inch thick. Um, and the other big hiccup with a performance boot is you really have to maintain a trim cycle. Six weeks is, you might be able to get away with six weeks in a scoot, possibly in a renegade. If you learn how to roll your edges, you will not get away with six weeks in most other performance boots. You just won't. And frankly, your horse shouldn't be on a six-week trim cycle. Uh, even, you know, the American Failures Association has now started saying, hey, you need a five-week trim cycle. It's better for your horse. Us barefoot folks have been saying for a long time, four and five weeks is better for your horse. You know, we don't want to have to be making big changes every trim and taking off a lot of foot every trim. If your horse is sore every trim, you're taking off too much foot and probably in the wrong place. So. That, that's a question to also to ask yourself is, okay, why do I need boots? Is it because your horse is sore every single trim? Because you should be investigating some other situations. But if you've got a horse who, you know, lives in a stall in a soft turnout and you ride on rocks and you need a pair of boots for when you go places where the footing isn't great, then hoof boots are absolutely a fantastic option for you. Um, they last longer than shoes while your upfront investment might be a little more expensive than shoes, or it might not be depending on where you are in the country and how expensive your shoes are, you know, you'll, you'll pay for your boots in two, three shoeings, easy. And your boots will last you a long time. Um, 
that's another question I get is how long will these boots last? And the, the answer depends on how many miles do you ride on what kind of terrain and how does your horse wear your wear, you know, it's just like some horses, you can reset their shoes and some horses, they trash their shoes in, in, in six weeks or five weeks or eight weeks or how long, you know, it, it depends on how your horse moves on the terrain you ride on and how much you do. You know, I have, you know, a client who she's put like eight, 900 miles on a pair of scoots in fairly rough terrain. There's a dealer in, who uh, does scoots. She's in the Rocky Mountains and she gets six, 700 miles out of hers. And then she saves them to ride on uh, in the winter when it's not, when she's rough, mostly on snow and ice and doesn't need so much rock protection. She's worn through the toes, but they're fine with studs in them to go on ice. That's another question is, can we stud the boots? Can, how are they for riding on snow and ice or grass or something like that? Yes, you can put studs in boots and ride in them that way. There is pretty much no situation in which boots are not an optimal answer for you with perhaps the exception of raining because of the sliding stops. And I, I know at some point somebody was trying to figure out how to get a slide plate onto a boot. You know, I think that would work fine for sliding, but it wouldn't work for spins. Mm. So I think that's probably the only situation in which boots might not be a great option for you. But can you trail ride, jump, event, fox hunt, work cows, ride distance on any kind of terrain, uh, upper level dressage? Put your horse in turnout, show. Showing is dependent on your governing authority and certain boots. Yes, you can. Usually it's you have to stay below the hairline. So you might need to do like glove shells with tape or um, some authorities are allowing scoot boots if you take off the pasture and strap. Yeah, like I said, with the exception of, of raining because of the slides, I really can't think of a situation in which boots are not as good as or a more optimal situation than Shoes, frankly. Yeah. And I'm sure that a lot of people have found, you know, really good benefits in boots, or at least they're interested in, in trying them and seeing, you know, could this be an option for their horse? So I think this is a really good episode to get people to start thinking about what their horse can use and, you know, what different options are out there. And that it's not, it's obviously not just a one size fits all, but there's almost always something that will fit Mm -hmm. your horse. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, and that's the thing, is usually I find when people approach me and they'll say, I really want to have my horse barefoot, you know, I only need shoes for trail riding, and I don't trail ride that much, and so I take the shoes on and off and on and off, and the on and off is hard on the horse because, you know, the transitioning back and forth, and that's for sure, you know, a situation which um, has to be done with a very tactful trim approach. You know, a lot of horses... If they have any, if they, if they don't have super optimal feet with strong, in, you know, internal structures, um, and if the trimming is, you know, been trimming back sole and trimming back frog too much, going in and out of shoes a lot is really, it, 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 yeah, your horse is going to have time off. And by the way, boots are a perfect solution for eliminating or keeping your time off to a minimum or transitioning your horse in and out of shoes. Um, so... Folks will approach me and say, hey, you know, I really wish I could do boots, but I bought like two or three pairs and I'm broke. <laughs> you know, it's 200 bucks a pair and I, I can't keep buying new pairs of boots because you can't return them. With the exception of Easy Care, Easy Care does have a 45-day satisfaction guarantee. So, you know, yeah, it's really, really tough that these boot manufacturers only allow you to put the boots on a perfectly clean foot that you've washed and towel dried and then you put them on in a concrete or rubber matted barn aisle you know and like with towels laid down and like they have to be returned in as pristine I mean, it's ridiculous i'm sorry most of my issues with this come to the boot manufacturers not helping customers be successful and that puts us in the situation of i mean like i personally if i fit your horse in person i, gu- I guarantee that i'll get you a boot that works Every so often I, I come across a fit where I just like, I don't know if I can do it in this situation. I think we need to do a couple of rounds of glue-ons and rehab your horse, but say that it's not a client horse of mine for trimming and that kind of thing. You know, I'll say, look, I'll work with you as best I can, but I, I'm going to have trouble guaranteeing fit here because I see so many potential problems. 
And we usually ma- manage to figure it out. But, you know, so therefore that puts the onus on dealers. And I'm a dealer for four different manufacturers and I work with whatever. But that puts the strain on us to take back the boots and then resell them, which usually we can do just fine if the boots are only lightly used. You know, especially certain brands. Just I, I, I can't keep certain things in stock. It's really tough as an owner trying to boot without somebody who's experienced and who has fitting shells and who has multiple brands available to you. And so definitely there are a lot of folks out there who would love to have their horses in boots, but just, just can't that they just, they, they tried and they, they, and it just not working and their horse is sore and they got rubs and, and they can't ride because they need boots to ride, but they can't put the boots on because the boots are rubbing and the horse has open wounds. Now from the boots that don't fit because the measurements were wrong and, you know, there's just so many situations which are totally avoidable if you have someone with a little bit of experience who can say, yeah, look, you know, X boot is not going to fit that foot. Don't even try. It's frustrating to me that companies are not more helpful. Certain retailers, uh, Riding Warehouse, big shout out to Riding Warehouse. They are awesome with returns. So... You know, they're really great in terms of helping you get boots and they are dealers for quite a few different brands. So they're a great option to go through. And again, if you can find somebody who can help you out locally, or even if you've got a friend who's got some boots and you want to try them on, um, but that has its own set of problems. Used boots are a whole nother situation that might be in our topic of tips and tricks and, and, and that kind of thing, because boots do break in differently. So just because a used boot in one size and model fits your horse does not mean that a new boot in that size and model will fit your horse. Excellent, excellent fun and uh, trial and error required there. So if you're going to buy something used, buy the exact boot that you tried. Don't 100% rely on a used boot of a, of a shape and model and size fitting brand new the same way is the Reader's Digest version of that. But yeah, so... The biggest problem with hoof boots is fit and choice. And once you have gotten your fit dialed in and you've got the right choice of boot for you and your horse, um, the success rate is huge. It, it absolutely is. But it can be a bumpy road to get there. And I like to help as much as I can. You know, um, I'm more than happy to, you know, real quick say, hey, yeah, you know, this is a boot. There are various groups on Facebook, you know, Boot Exchange, that kind of thing. And uh, quite a few dealers, uh, you know, hang out in those and can can make suggestions or, you know, obviously say, hey, look, I'd be happy to help you with fitting this this foot in the kind of boot that so-and-so sells. And also I do consults. So happy to, you know, look at a full set of photos and whatnot and make and, and have a discussion with you. Uh, as far as what you do with your boots, what you want to do, you know, what you're doing presently, what you would love to be doing six months from now, a year from now, sometimes that will necessitate a different boot, just depending on where your horse is in that particular phase of, of their of their hoof journey. And so that's something that I do do. And um, boots are really just, I, I, I love them. You know, it's very frustrating to me. My personal horse has a hoof injury and so is in Goulons for the foreseeable future. And I'm, I have, I have all these cool boots that I want to put on her that I can't. Yeah. <laughs> so, and my other horse doesn't need boots most of the time, but I, sometimes I just put them on him anyway, because it's, I want to. Boots are fun. So yeah, I definitely have more questions. Although I think a bunch of them would probably be good for like a tips and tricks episode. Absolutely. I'm happy to do multiple episodes on this because realistically there's multiple topics here. You know, one is choosing a boot, then is, you know, fitting a boot. And then it's like tips and tricks. And then it's like, oh no, X happened. What do I do? It's like, these are all different things to do. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being willing to do this. So I'll talk to you soon. All All right. Bye. Bye. I always say that I'm slightly more hoof obsessed than the average person, and chances are, if you're listening to a hoof care podcast, you are too, so we should probably be friends. Feel free to find me on Facebook or email me at thehumblehoof at gmail.com.